Greetings, friends. Welcome to another edition of the Gospel Uncompromised. I'm Minister D. Bush from the Church of God, a church that's built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Always glad to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Philippians chapter 4. And we'll pick it up at verse uh, number 6. Philippians chapter 4. And we'll begin at verse 6. We're kind of going to kind of continue in the same vein that we were in on last time. Uh, you know, last time we began looking at the the benefits of serving God, Thank you. and and uh, we we read in the the one hundred and third division of Psalms how God uh, heal all our sickness and diseases. We looked at how uh, He forgive all of our iniquities, mm -hmm. and and we just walked down and and we saw how we can if if we abide in God we can ask what we will. And if we have the faith, then God would give it to us. Uh, you know, there, there are benefits to serving God. But the enemy uh, can, can try to cloud that and, and misconstrue that and make you doubt what the Word of God says. Make you believe that uh, you're, you're in this thing all by yourself and, and that it is foolish to believe that, that God's going to do what he says. But I've learned to stand on that there are two scriptures uh, that I just 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 stand on. Yeah. Uh, in Numbers chapter twenty three, don't 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 we don't go don't go there. I just quote it. The Bible says God is a is not a man that he should lie. I, I stand on that. Yeah. Uh, I've been without a job, and 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 but somehow somewhere all of my obligations have always been met. I've been able to pay my mortgage, been able to pay my, my car notes, and, and, and whatever bills I have, I've been able to pay them because God is not a man that he should lie. And, and, and then in Philippians, the Bible says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And, and what happens is we sometimes get to looking at folk outside of church and we see that they uh, appear to be blessed. And, 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 and that's one of the reasons God teach so heavily against covetousness. You don't don't get caught up in what people have. Don't get caught up in, 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 in um, all of this materialistic uh, stuff. In fact, he told us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And, and also, oftentimes we get to looking at what some old drug dealer have and get jealous of that. But, but no, 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 it, it's, it's, it, it's not about that. We are in the pursuit of eternal life because all of the, we didn't bring any of this stuff here and we're not going to take any of it with us. Thank you. Okay, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, and uh, we'll start reading at verse 6. And the Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. So, so now, uh, 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 be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't be stressing out. Don't be, you know, you're just pulling your hair out and, and, and stressed out and don't know how to stay. But God said, be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and God has proven himself to us time and time again. But the enemy will come and whisper in your ear, well, look how, how you're going to get out of this mess. Mm -hmm. I, well, how are you going to get out of this? But but God has never failed. Now, if you, if you really stop and think of it, God had not failed you. You know, they, they sang that song, say, he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. I don't really like that, to, to, because to say that he's on time, that, that's to suggest that God is somehow governed by time. But no, God, whenever God comes, it, 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 it's, it's, it's in time. You know, I heard one preacher say, he said, he may not come when you want him, but you'll want him when he get there. So whenever he gets there, it, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, a man can set a, a, a due date if he want to. 
But if God show up, you, you know, I like when he did that with, with Lazarus. You know, the, but over, over in St. John, the Bible says that he, he was a, a Sabbath day's journey, which means he was about a half a mile away from where Lazarus was. He could have got there in, in plenty of time. Mm -hmm. But he, he allowed Lazarus to die and be buried. Mm -hmm. And and when he got there, it was, it was still all right. Yes. So the Bible says, be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anything. Yeah, the doctor gave you a bad report, but by, by his stripes, I am healed. You know, by his stripes, I am healed. And even if even if it take me out of here, it's still all right because I'm resting in his word. So the Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Tell God about it. They have an old song that says, I must tell Jesus yeah. all about it. All about my trouble. You know, so so let your request be known unto God. Now drop back to us. Uh, uh, hold your finger on on Philippians. I want to just go back and review a little bit in Saint John chapter fifteen. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Saint John chapter fifteen, and we'll pick it up at verse seven. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Saint John chapter fifteen and at verse seven, and the Bible says, "If ye abide in me, and my words." Abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, so now, now, it, it, what you will, there's no limit there. Whatever it is that you want, you can go to God here. And, and, and now, what we're talking about over in Philippians now, he says, be careful for nothing. Now, he just said you can ask what you will. So, what are we worrying about? You know, I remember, uh, uh, see, see we, we grew up on prayer. You know, we didn't go to doctors. I wasn't even born in no hospital. My mom had eight children. My oldest brother, the only one that was born in the hospital. She, she had seven children at home with midwife. And, and we didn't go to doctors. Didn't do it. They, if, if one of us got sick, they got that all out. They anointed us and prayed the prayer of faith. And, you know, even as a little boy, I, I knew that once my daddy prayed for me, I, I just knew I was going to be all right. Because he used to sing a song, he used to sing a song that they say, it's all right now. God has heard my prayer. It's all right now. And, 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 and so even as a child, I knew. You know, I, I remember one time, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, miss, I don't remember it too, so well because they said I was, down, I was real sick. Uh, this was was so sick that I couldn't walk. They was carrying me around the house there. And uh, I, my mama said my, the fever was so high that it was even hot to touch me. And I was I was delusional. I was talking random talk. But I and I, I finally remember uh, the 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 saints came to the house there and I heard them pray, heard them heard them singing and praying. They were saying, "It's just keep on believing. God will answer prayer." You know, I, cause that's the way they did it back then. If 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 it got so bad where they couldn't come to church, where well, they came and had church at the house, there. That's how they did it. And, and and so so I as as a child, I I just knew. And so when I went out to college, if, if the thing got bad, let I, I got let me get on the phone here. Let me call mom. Let me call dad. So let me get get in touch with the saints. Yes. Cause that thing gonna turn now. Thank you, Jesus. So, so now he says here, be careful for nothing. Yes. See, and, and some folk, uh, some folk get a little, little, little frustrated with me. They say you just don't seem like nothing bothers you. They don't. Mm -hmm. I got too much experience with God. Mm -hmm. I know He gonna come through. Thank you, Jesus. So, so no, I'm not. With, you know, I remember on, on the job they were, they were, they, you, they, 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 it was had gotten out that they was gonna lay some folks off. And uh, it, it don't seem like you were. I'm not. Because uh, he, he laid me off on this. And, and I did get laid off. I, I did get laid off. Mm -hmm. I just kept right on going. Because yes. somehow, some way, God is going to take care of me. I'm his child. I'm yes. walking upright. I, I'm, I'm living all I know to do. God is yes. obligated to take care of me. I know he is. Yes. 
Yeah, but now, yeah. now, now the folk that, that, that now you are a sinner of man out there in the world, and God ain't got no obligation to you now. So I guess you should work. But now I, I've been baptized in his name. I feel with his spirit. He got to take care of me. He got to do it. So, so he says here, be careful for nothing. Don't be worrying about nothing. Yes, Lord. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Tell God about it. You know, a lot of mistake folks get, they go get, getting on the phone telling their friends. What are your friends going to do? Your friends have limited ability. Okay, verse 7 in the Bible says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Sometimes it, it may move you to tears a little bit. You may shed some tears. That's all. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. Go ahead and cry. Sometimes you get a good cry in and you feel better about that thing. I don't, you know, I don't pray. I don't cry. Now, now get on up from there. You know, the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. Now you get one night. Now, but, but in the morning, don't you get up with that mess. Leave it there. Take it to the altar and leave it there. Don't sit around here worrying about this stuff. Amen, amen. Because I got my benefits now. I got my benefits. You know, sometimes when you, when you go to the doctor or whatnot, they'll check to see if this is covered. Well, well, uh, uh, it says here, well, yes, it, that, that's covered. Mm -hmm. So whatever my situation is, it's covered. Mm -hmm. It's covered mm -hmm. under the blood of Jesus. It's covered. Whatever, whatever it is, it's covered. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I don't worry about nothing. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank it says here, and the peace of God. See, see, it is the peace of God. While you're in the storm, while you're in the storm, you can, you can be calm. You can be cool. You can be collected. You don't have to worry. Be around here pulling your hair. He said, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. When everybody else committing suicide, everybody else popping pills and, and jumping off bridges, you just as cool. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. All right, verse 8. All right, now. And the Bible says, finally, brother, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. What whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. See, so you turn that TV off, cause that news you watch that 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 out of depression. All that stuff going on, turn it off. I don't worry about that because it's not coming to my house. Because I pray over my house. I, I pray the prayer of faith over my house is not coming. Ain't no Zika coming in my house. I bind that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. It can't come in here. I don't care what's going on out there in the world. I don't accept it. Whatsoever things are true. See, there's a difference between truth and fact. You know, it, it may be a fact. You know, you don't have but so much money in your bank account. That's a fact. But the truth is, the word of God says, I can have, if I pray and I, I believe, I can have whatever it is. That's, that's the truth. Yes. Jesus said, I'm the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. See, see, so whatsoever things are true. The doctor may have given you a bad report. He, he, he did show you the x-rays. You. you know, that's, that, that, that's a fact. But the truth is, by his stripes, I am healed. That's the truth. Thank you, Amen. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. I don't have to try to do nothing dishonest. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. While you're going through, think on the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
All right, look at verse 9 now. Look at verse 9. These things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. See, I got some, I, I look at my forefathers. I can look at my grandmother. I can look at my daddy. I can look at my mother. I can look at Mother Jackson. I look at Mother White. How they don't folk believe God. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen, amen. All right, drop down to verse 14. Verse 14, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Okay, verse 14, Philippians chapter 4 and at verse 14. <coughs> okay, and the Bible says, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my with my afflictions. Uh, well, verse 19. Verse 19 is what I want you to get out on. Verse 19. Just drop over verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 and at verse 19 now. And the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your needs. All your needs. My God shall supply. Shall supply all your needs. If you need it, then, then God's responsible for it. Now, now you won't. He ain't, God ain't obligated to you won't. Thank you. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So I, if, if it's a need, I can go to God in the name of Jesus Christ and some hey God, he, he's, he's obligated. Thank you, Jesus. I heard David say, I'm young. I was young, but now I'm old. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Now, I'm young and I'm older. I'm not, not, not old. Lord bless me to see next Sunday. I'll be 43. You know, uh, uh, and, and, and in this in this little time, I, I God have never failed. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> see, he didn't come how I thought he would come sometime. There's some times he came in, in different forms. You know, I was expecting this way, or I wanted that way, but he, it still worked out. Yes, thank you. But my God shall. Yeah. Supply all your need according to your riches, according to his riches and glory. All right, look now at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Amen, amen. See, and that's what, that's what Satan wants us, to, wants to do. He wants us to start magnifying our problems instead of magnifying our God. That's, that's the trick of the devil, to get you to looking at your problems. Instead of looking at your God. Okay, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and then verse 25. All right, and the Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, now we said, we just read, be careful for nothing. And now he says here, take no thought. <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, that ye, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than rain? And there's a scripture that says, uh, uh, life is more than the possession, that the uh, uh, things that a man possesses. Yes. Okay, okay. They say what? Okay, it's, it's not life more than meat and the body, right? And for some folk now, they, they just live to eat, you know, and they live for to put on the, the, the latest fashion. That's all they live for, it seems like. Look at verse 26 now. And the Bible says, But the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not Better than they? Are you not better than they? We were created in God's own image. One scripture said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? <clears throat> okay, verse, verse 27, and the Bible says, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? If we're in high school, by worrying, is that going to change anything? What you going to change by worrying? What you gonna change by pulling your hair out? All you gonna do is be bald head. 
Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why, and why take ye thought for rain? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of those. And of course we know Solomon was one of the richest men, was the richest men to ever live. So Solomon could dress, and the lily, he, he still didn't have nothing on old, old lily. Thank you. Verse 30 now, all right, verse 30, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, verse 30, and the Bible says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye of little faith. That's your problem. You don't have faith. That's the problem. <laughs> okay, watch this. Now in the Bible says, Therefore take no thought, saying what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or whither shall you, whither all shall you be clothed. I would, don't don't know, say I'm worried about that. That's all that's God's that, that's God's responsibility. <clears throat> All right, all right, verse 32 now. The Bible says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. The people of the world, they, they're concerned, they're consumed with that stuff. You belong to God now, you shouldn't be concerned about that. Okay, for all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. God know what you need. And he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think. All right, look at verse 33 now. And the Bible says, but, first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Just get right with God. See, 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 then you could take God to task then. One scripture say, command thou me. You could take God to task. But now, you got to be in right standing with him. We said on last time, see, you can't go to the doctor if you're, you're not, you don't have the benefits now. Mm -hmm. See, contractors, there are some folks that work at, for, uh, at, a, at a job, but they're contractors. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not employees, so you don't get the, you don't get the benefits. Mm -hmm. You go down there to that doctor, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. But now, because I work for the company. I have the benefit of going to the doctor. I have the benefit of going to the dentist. And they cover, you know, the 80% of it or however it goes. But if you're a contractor, yeah, you work at the company. But you don't work for the company. See, some folk go to church. and But, but they don't go to Jesus. <clears throat> okay, all right, all right now. Okay, so he says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that's what that's the problem. We got the thing back. We want to get all this stuff first and then bring all this stuff and all these problems to God. If you if you sought God first, then God can bless you. All right, look, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God will hook you up. God will take care of you. <clears throat> Verse 34, the Bible says, therefore, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We're sitting and worried about something, something that ain't happened yet. You know. Now it's the first of the month. Now I, I, I pay, paid my mortgage. And I'm sitting here worried about how I'm going to pay. And Lord, how I'm going to pay this mortgage in July. Oh Lord, I did. It ain't nowhere near July. First of all, who said you're going to live to July? And you ain't worried about what's going on in July. July not here. July take care of itself. Drop back here. Uh, Matthew, 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 Matthew chapter 6. Just drop back to uh, chapter, uh, verse 9. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I have uh, uh, quite a few classmates that have, have passed. They, they're dead and gone. And, and no doubt, uh, you know, they had all kind of dreams about the future. You know, but they're dead and gone. So all you have is today. That's all you have. You can make all these grandiose plans that you want to make, but you, you don't know. 
That's why he said, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 and at verse 9. Watch this. Okay, the Bible says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. No, not they, they give us this year our yearly bread. Give us the bread for the next 30 years. No, give us this day our daily bread. If you ask something to eat today, thank the Lord. And he's still, he, he go, he, he, he's still God. All right, verse 12, he says here, forgive us our, our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's the model prayer. Lord, Lord bless me with a Lexus. Bless me, Lord, with a Louis Vuitton bag. Oh, Lord, I know you're able to bless me with some Gucci shoes. No, this is fairly simple. Just, just help me through the day. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> you know, deliver me from evil. You know, that, that, that's just pretty simple. Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Now, now look now. Uh, at go back to uh, First Peter. Amen. We gotta get ready to let you go. First Peter. First Peter, chapter five. We have benefits, and and, and, and and don't allow Satan to trick you. Amen. Get you to not uh, use your benefits. First Peter, chapter five. First Peter, chapter five, and at verse seven. And when, and when last time we we looked at the benefits, and man, we got some good benefits. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. That's the problem. He, you know, the devil can trick you out of believing. He can make you doubt this thing. <clears throat> First Peter Jesus. chapter 5. And we'll start reading that verse 7. All right. And the Bible says, casting all your care upon him. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The Lord is concerned about you. Cast all your cares upon him. You're carrying this stuff around, and God wants to carry it. He wants to carry it for you. Thank you Casting all your cares Thank upon you. him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Watch this, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about sinking whom he may devour. If once you, you, you're so caught up and so concerned with it, all of the uh, life trials and tribulations, you know, and then you get your mind off God. Thank you, Jesus. You're so focused on your, your problems, and you don't now you don't realize that God has the power to, to deal with your situation. All right, all right. In verse 9, the Bible says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Somebody been through the same thing you've been through. You're not you're not alone. It's not unique. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody somewhere have been through what you've been through. Okay, okay. But watch this. Verse 10, the Bible says here, But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I've been through that. I've been I've been around the block before, so I know what God can do. You know, they say this. Is there anything too hard for God? It wasn't too hard for him back in '92. So this ain't too hard either. Okay, okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Look at Matthew chapter 14. Amen. I got to get ready to let you go. Matthew chapter 14. 
Matthew chapter 14. And we'll start reading at verse 22. Matthew chapter 14. And again. And we'll begin reading at verse 22. Praise the Lord. You know, I remember uh, the, the story about how the disciples was on, on in the ship and a storm rose up. And Jesus was down in the lower part of the ship's sleep. And the ship started taking on water. And, and here they panicked. Got Jesus, the Jesus in the ship with them. And wasn't no way that ship was going to go down. And here they panicking and, and ran down there and woke Jesus up. So I don't have a problem with them waking Jesus up now. But it's how they did it. Lord cares thou not that we perish. What, what you mean we perish? The, the Lord is on this boat. That, that boat couldn't go down. And that's the same way it is. God is with us. If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. What are you panicking about? Here these disciples, they, they saw all the miracles that Jesus had wrought and they don't panic. Lord cares thou not that we perish. How could that boat perish if Jesus was on it? <clears throat> all right, all right. Look now. Okay, Matthew chapter 14 and then verse 22. Amen, amen. And the Bible says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. See, that's some, sometimes you just got to withdraw from people. Just got to get away from folks. All right, all right. And, and the Bible says, verse 24, the Bible says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake and said un, spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Hey, y'all, this me, y'all, y'all just come down. It, this me. <clears throat> All right, verse 28 now. And Peter said, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come on the waters. Lord, if that's really you, then let me come on the waters. See, sometimes you, you can test God. Yes, you can test God. You can, you can say, Lord, you say. But now you got to be living right. You can, you can hold God to his word. Lord, you say. You can test God. Yes, you can. I'll read about all these blessings that you did for these folks. Like, what, what about me? <clears throat> okay, okay. And he, Peter said, Lord, if it be... Thou bid me to come on the water. Okay, verse 29, and he said, Come. And Peter, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walking on the water. Yes. My God, man. But now watch this, watch this. Look, look. But when he saw the wind boisterous, See, when he started paying attention to what was going on around him, he, he said, because a whole lot of folk started out. Okay, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He began to sink. Notice he wasn't sinking while he was looking at Jesus. See, that's what gets you down when you start you 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 you, you start believing what the doctor said. Start, you know, your 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 friends start talking about you. But my God, you got to be like Joe. Thank you, Jesus. Old Joe friends came and they started. Your wife, your wife came too. It said, "Why don't you curse God and die?" Now notice, she said, "Why don't you curse God?" She said, "So why don't we curse?" She said, "You do." She didn't say we cuss it. No, no. You got to be like Job, man. In the face of all that opposition, in the face of all the obstacles, stay with God. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so it says here, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink, and he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And that's what you can do today. All you got to do is just cry, Lord, save me. Whatever your situation is, just cry, Lord, save me. And in verse 31 in the Bible says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why did thou doubt? And that's the question for us today. Why did we doubt? Why did we doubt God? God have been good to us. He blessed us over and over and over again. Why do we doubt God? Amen, amen. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope I said something to help somebody. Praise the Lord.